wake up again, but it feel like I'm dead I don't understand how you could feel this way I don't wanna move, so now I'm in my head And I'm not sure if I'll see another day Wild world today we're going to be cleaning some things um so yeah i'm just going to hop into it real quick i'm very happy about a few things but i'll talk about it in a second um i already started to clean a bit i have the two east african forests in here I call them bastard one and bastard two <laughs> well it's a very simple reason as to why i call them that because they're flipping bastards they aren't really, they're just very, very nervous snakes. Um, they're very twitchy and very, very fast, but they're also very, very beautiful. Awesome, awesome snakes. Maybe you'll get a better look of it before I go in there. So these guys, um, out of all the subspecies of um, the forest cobras, these have the least potent venom, but their venom is still no joke. They <laughs> can put you down within two hours. They have a potent neurotoxic and cytotoxic venom. Um, they're found on the coastal regions. Hello, are you coming back at me? The coastal regions of KZN. Um, their distribution is actually quite small. I don't know about their population in the wild. I don't think they're endangered as of yet, but they're awesome snakes. I mean, the browns going into the black speck and going into completely black. It's just awesome. Hey, humph, humph. Get off the hook. Please, if you could. Thank you, sir. Let's just get you back into your clean home. If you wouldn't mind. Oh, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Go hide in your house. There. Man. Sometimes these animals are quite stupid. But let's get its partner out that's <laughs> hiding its head. But you can see the awesome color of these guys. The how the tails go completely pitch black. You see there completely black like the West African forest and obviously brown at the top that's why they're called the brown forest cobras a uh, little showing off for us a little bit there they also have a very very narrow hood compared to most other cobras but they stand very very tall they have an awesome awesome striking posture or threat display but I'm not gonna mess with them too much they are quite cold I want them back on the heating pad to get warmed up hey I don't know why you want to come back at me instead of going into your house. But there you can see how black the tail goes. It's almost completely pitch black. But these snakes are very, very arboreal. That's why it makes them quite difficult to handle. Eh? Because they're very, very fast, elusive and very strong. They can have a small little tail wrapped around you and can shoot straight back up you so, so quickly. But yeah, I think I'm going to move on to the green mambas. Then I have the gaboons to clean and I have some other things to clean, but I'll see you guys then. So I am going to be taking out my green mamba because she went to the bathroom. Don't stress, I know where she is, but I'm very, very happy with this girl. This girl went two to three months with out eating and if you guys know anything a have a very very fast metabolism so two to three months without eating is very very bad that's why you guys saw in the last video that i well a few videos ago that i chewed fed her but she actually um ate on her own which i'm very very happy about and it digested and it didn't <laughs> she didn't really good so i'm very very happy um but i'm just gonna take her out quickly i just need the other gloves to open up this lockbox i just wanted to speak a bit about it and the fecal matter the shit doesn't look too bad um so i'm very very happy with this girl she's looking a lot better as well look how cute she is i really like these hide boxes i think she's really de-stressed a lot because of this hide box she actually has a place to escape and be sort of very very safe or feel very safe just when she does that, it's a bit of an issue. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. She obviously has a lot more energy now that she's had food in her. Hey. Hey. You are being
being very irritating misses. But yeah, as I said, she wasn't feeding for... Sorry, I'm just concentrating. She wasn't feeding for almost three months. And that's insane. She hasn't lost a lot of her body mass, but obviously she has lost a bit of it. Um, she's still, this is about the size of wild caught mambas that you would usually find, or green mambas. But them being a boreal and using a lot of their energy a lot of the time, their metabolisms are super, super fast. I mean, even her color's looking better, she's moving around a lot better, she doesn't feel so lethargic anymore, and look at the strength that she has, just to climb straight up. That's why these guys are so awesome, awesome, lovely snakes. But, let me get her into the bun. Hopefully, she can flies. But, you guys can see, well, my girlfriend's closing, but you can see the color there. She's looking a bit better, and I'm very, very happy with the snake. Gonna offer her food again today, and hopefully she takes it. But, yeah, I'll see you when I've done cleaning, and, yeah, I'm gonna put it back. So, I've cleaned, oh, there's a bit of shit still in there. That's really nice. Yeah. Even more shit. Maybe I'm blind. Fuck. Um, but yeah, I just cleaned out her enclosure there. I'm gonna put her back real quick. Um, I'm also gonna leave a rat in there when I come back to feed. Look how beautiful she is. Eastern Green Mamba. Awesome coffin shaped head. Look at the strength of her. She's, yeah, I think she's doing so much better. Lifting up, climbing. Oh, I think she can actually climb all the way out of this thing if she really wanted to. But, let's get her. Sorry, girl. She's also very, very calm. Or, I know green mambas are usually... Hey. No, grab your tail. Um, green mambas are usually renowned as being much calmer mamba than that of a black mamba. Hey. I just want to get your tail, darling. But they still really have a potent, potent neurotoxic venom. They also are known to having a less potent venom than the black mambas, which is correct, but it's still nothing to play around with. But you can see how absolutely beautiful this snake is. I mean, it's so calm, so relaxed. It's such an awesome personality of a snake to show people because people have these ideas about mambas that they just killing machines they just want to bite you repeatedly and they just that's just not true i mean if you don't mess with them they won't mess with you and that's the same with every single snake out there but look how far she can actually go out there that's insane the amount of strength that they have but you know obviously they live up in the trees they're very very arboreal snakes much more so than the black mamba um, if you can get off my hook that would be great to use a hook backwards. Huh? Innovation. <laughs> New ways of handling. It's copyrighted though. Can't steal it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I'm fucking, I'm actually so thrilled with this green mamba here. I'm hoping she'll take down her next meal. I'm giving her smaller meals than you would usually give to uh, of her size, but yeah, I just want to get her slowly back into eating and hopefully she does really well. I'm trying really hard to keep her alive. But, yeah, let's move on to the other snakes, I think I'll see you then. Okay, so my gaboons went to the bathroom after the last time feeding them, they're both over here. This one at the back shat in this normal place, so it's just taken up refuge by the other one. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take them out, clean them out, and show you guys them, because gaboons are just awesome animals. Um, gonna be wearing these hexama gloves that people love oh so much. No, but who really cares? Safety first in that. Oh, you're also a bit hissy pissy today. Yeah. I'll show you guys. Look how beautiful they are. Insane, insane snakes. I absolutely love them. This is Bitus Rhinosaurus. You can see the little nostrils that they have on the front there. 
Um, these are West African gaboon bugs, not the East African. The East Africans are actually endangered, so it's very difficult to get your hands on one of them. But these guys are known for the world's largest fangs and the world's um, biggest venom yield. And their venom is no joke either. Neurotoxic components, cardiotoxic components, cytotoxic, hemotoxic, just a cocktail of everything under the wind. Well, under the sun, not under the wind. <laughs> Same thing. Um, much out. It's a nasty, nasty bite. Um, but they're awesome animals. They're very, very laid back usually. And they also have a multicolored tongue, which is actually sick if he pops it out again. It's black that goes into like a pinkish purple sort of thing. You're going to flash your tongue again. It's not doing they, maybe or something. I swear I've seen it. But let's get you straight. You can actually see the size of them, how big they've gotten. It's very difficult to see in the enclosure. But let's just get both of them. Ouch. I think this one is the more pissed off one. I don't think you can see that well because the light, I need to get a new light in here. But look how beautiful this guy is. He's targeting my thumb there. He's very, very pissed off. Sorry about that. But yeah, this Oki doesn't mind taking a tag out of anyone. It's a very, very pissed off um, little gaboon, which is very uncharacteristic of this. Um, this genus of well, the species of snakes they're usually very very relaxed but he's just popped out of, i think this is actually the she that's probably why she's so upset <laughs> probably on a monthly cycle <laughs> um but yeah they're awesome awesome snakes even though this one doesn't like me very much and is going for a tag so i am just gonna move very slowly but there you can see them together awesome snakes absolutely love them growing quite fast growing like weeds but i'm going to clean up their poop real quick and i'll get back to you guys soon my girlfriend's just dropping and breaking everything but i'll be back and so i've cleaned out the gaboons these um hissy fissy little things not so little anymore actually this woman thinks that like she can stand as close as she wants to these guys my girlfriend, she's a very, very smart human being, but you can see how absolutely beautiful these guys are. I can never get over them, man. Just the markings, the patterns, the colors, just everything is just so, so awesome. Absolutely love them. Awesome, awesome snakes. But what I'm gonna do quickly is put their heads. Oh my gosh, you are so dramatic. Um, because they kind of suck at getting water, I am going to just push the heads in, just so they know that the water's there. Hey. You know I'm thirsty. Yeah, he's not thirsty. But yeah, with the younger ones, I think these ones are okay with finding the water. But the younger ones, they sort of just sit and wait, and they don't actually wait for water. They wait for the rain to fall, and that's how they really um, drink. So, I mean, squirting them down can work but just to make sure you just little you dip their head in and they usually start to drink if they're thirsty so it's just a little trick for little baby gaboons i think these guys are a little bit smarter at the size they still just don't understand how a hook works they're very very intelligent animals they just don't like riding hooks at all but this oak is going into shed but they're still flipping gorgeous like, I honestly, I'm um, lost for words when I take these guys out there. Insanely beautiful. Just look at that. Awesome snakes. The, the two-tone, you know, two-tone tongue flicking out like that. It's just so insane. Awesome snakes. But looks like it's going to be eyeing me out. Also going to do the same thing here quickly. Trying to get this few, well, I think this is the male to drink. There you see found the water and now it's drinking there you can see that the jaws are flexing there it's a bit dark but yeah so it's a little trick just to get them to start drinking on their own um you know you obviously don't want your little baby gaboons to die when there's so much flipping money so expensive and then it's just so beautiful absolutely love them so it's a nice little neat trick that i learned from actually beyond the guy that i got these from it's a very very awesome guy 
my girlfriend just looked at me like I was fucking retarded. But I mean, Bjorn's an awesome guy. He's from the Reptile Garden. If you're down in South Africa, um, you must go check him out. He's out in Balbo and Monkey Town. He has awesome animals. He's just, his husbandry is on point. He's just an awesome guy. And I mean, if you're interested in reptiles and want to get something, he's the guy to go to. Especially if you're in the Western Cape area. He's awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, can't give him enough credits, but I'm going to move on to the next snake and I'll see you guys then. So, guys saw the little Cape Coral. Absolutely love these guys, little Jack Russells of the snake world. Um, Switch, sponsor me, please. <laughs> Absolutely love their drinks and they're cheap. But, yeah, this Cape Coral, they love to dig. They're subterrestrial snakes usually. Um, this camera woman has to be careful because I have to dig around you. But, there it is. Look how beautiful, eh? Oh, I absolutely love them. Hey, little, little feisty little snake. So these guys are considered to be dangerous. Um, there's no recorded deaths of them, um, but they can actually cause shortness of breath, um, respiratory distress, um, not respiratory failure per se. I don't think anyone's been ventilated from these guys wants to bite he just bit himself absolute idiot but they are they're usually known for just okay i'm not going to talk about him he's just going to keep on biting himself just let's see if he'll calm down they're usually known for standing their ground and bluff striking that's why i call them the jack russells of the world um the snake world um they sort of they stand their ground a lot um and they spread a very narrow hood like a cobra so he's gonna bite himself again absolute idiot um He's gonna do it again. Um, that has no effect on them besides puncturing a little bit, putting their fangs into it, um, into them. Their venom doesn't have any effect against them, so it is all right, but it's just not the best thing ever. But as I was saying, they stand up and spread a narrow hood. They hiss a lot and they bluff strike a lot as well. You're getting very close to my finger. I'm gonna let you down because you want to bite me. But they stand their ground. I might get him to show a little. He stands like that and bluff strikes. You see that was a closed mouth. But they stand, they spread a little hood like that and they hiss and repeatedly strike out. It's very, very difficult to get these guys to bite you when they're doing this. Um, when they crawl, if they crawl on your hand or something like that, they might just take a little nibble like how he did like 60 times to himself. But you can see the little hood over there. Um, you can also see the snout. I think this guy had some damage on his snout. But they usually just shat everywhere. Um, okay. This oak is just not complying today. <laughs> shat all over the glass. They flip and have the temperaments of like prepubescent flipping teenage boy. Flipping. Oh. But I love them. They're cute snacks and yeah. But quite dumb. But I'm going to clean up the enclosure and, oh my gosh, there you guys can see him quickly, how he stands like that. So you see, they will hiss, they will musk, they will bluff strike, which is basically, they won't um, open their mouth to actually hit. I think the camera woman's struggling with the focus, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, they will hiss, they will strike and they'll do all of this. And it's actually all just bluffs. Um, these aren't proper strikes with the open mouth, it's just to sort of get you to leave them alone. They stand up like that to make them appear as big as possible to ward off possible predators. But yeah, they're awesome, awesome snakes. No anti-venom for them, obviously, because there's no recorded deaths. And that's not him wheezing, that's him trying to mask on me. Mask is just a mixture of poop and pee. Um, that's, you saw that he just sprayed everywhere. Um, yeah, it's also, also another sort of worn off predators sort of tactic but i'm just going to clean up real quick and then i'll put them back and then i'll get back to you guys as soon as possible so i've cleaned up the you can come look at the enclosure real quick i put some more water in put a bit of sand because these guys are subterrestrial i just want to make it a bit softer so you can actually dig and put a bit more substrate in so it feels a bit more comfortable but look how pretty the snake is they are quite small again i told i said in the last um video when i was feeding they get up to about 100 centimeters max um that's quite a big, big one. Um, I had one that was actually close to a meter and it was such a bastard and wanted to bite everything. There was no bluff strikes, there was no nothing. But yeah, this is an adult basically. It can grow a lot more. Um, but yeah, let's see if I can get this out safely without taking a bite. 
and climb back up. I just don't want to drop you again because you are quite down. Yeah. Just want to show them off to you guys a little bit more. Just the colors, the orange, the banding, just the everything. It's so, so cute. So these guys are also called Cape Coral Cobras because they imitate the cobra with the hood and things like that. But they aren't in the Naya family, obviously. They're not a true cobra. Hey, why are you you're readjusting your jaw after biting yourself like a tart? But they're awesome there. You might show a little bit of a hood for you guys. It's not really a hood, but he just stands upright and flattens a little bit. But they're awesome, awesome snakes. They're awesome beginner venomous snakes because obviously no recorded deaths. And if you're in South Africa, it's a local snake. So um, the doctors will know how to treat you symptomatically. And it's not, I wouldn't trust doctors, but it's better than an exotic bike like a copperhead or things like that. And this doesn't really cause tissue damage or any long lasting damage. Besides maybe putting you into um, respiratory distress, which isn't the most fun thing, but you won't have like missing a finger from a cophead bite or a white lip bite or things like that. And yeah, local is always better. <laughs> um, but they're beautiful, beautiful snakes. Just readjusting his jaw and then after flipping, trying to bite himself. But I'm gonna put him straight back. Hopefully he goes into his home and enjoys his new house. Please don't hit him with the back. That's exactly what you're going to do. I'm going to go to another bag. Sorry, I have to be a bit... Move with the quickness. Um, John, I think I'm going to... I'm going to check on the house next if they need to be cleaned. Um, if not, I'll move on to the cave program. That'll be the end of the video. But I'll see you guys when I do that. Okay, so what's up guys? So this isn't the end of the video. Um, uh, while editing I saw that the video was almost an hour long <laughs> with everything together so I decided to split the video into two separate parts so this is obviously going to be part one and yeah I didn't film an outro for it because I thought it would all be one video so I'm just here to say thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed please hit that like button and subscribe daily over here also want you guys to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed hey Bailey yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.